Hi guys, so this is our next case study. We've got um, Unit 1, Theme C, and this time we're in Section 4, which look at the impact of extreme weather on people and property. And we're going to look specifically at Typhoon Haiyan. Uh, it says pupils must be able to, in the specification, describe the impact of extreme weather on people and property using a case study of extreme weather, tornado drought or hurricane, outside of the British Isles. So we are going to use a typhoon. A typhoon is the same as a hurricane, uh, just a different name in different parts of the world, and we'll look at that later in a little bit more detail. So as before, um, you can use this video alongside your ebook um, to hopefully best learn the case study and develop high quality case study answers, particularly long answers. We're going to start by looking at what is a typhoon. So, typhoons are tropical storms created from low pressure systems in tropical areas. They have a distinct structure that you will recognise with spiralling bands of clouds and central eye which is free of cloud. And as I said before, they can also be known as hurricanes or cyclones depending on where you are in the world. We can see over here the formation of our hurricane or our typhoon. Uh, if we look here, we can see the warm air rises from the warm seas. Around the 7,000 islands, uh, islands of the Philippines, there is a lot of evaporation. This is quickly followed by condensation, which releases huge amounts of energy in the form of latent heat. And that's what is found within your typhoons. Uh, we can then see this central area here, and see it better down here is our central eye, which is clear of cloud, and at the outside of the eye, the most intense winds can be found. Just to give you some perspective, here we can see Typhoon Huyan on a global scale. It's completely covering the Philippines, it's a group of 7,000 islands over here. Up here we can see Japan, over here India, and down here the coast of Vietnam where Typhoon made land after it had passed across the Philippines. As we move across here, we can see the passage of Haiyan on a slightly smaller scale. and We can see how it passed across the Philippines here on the Friday. It then crossed the ocean before making landfall on the east coast of Vietnam over here. Typhoon Haiyan was known locally as Typhoon Yolanda and it made landfall in the Philippines on the 8th of November 2013. It's a category 5 hurricane. This means it is the um, highest category, most severe category, and brought sustained winds of 230 km per hour and gusts of up to 280 km per hour. This legend was constructed during Typhoon Haiyan, as you can see up here. So this led, the speeds are obviously a little bit slower. What you can see here is the severity of the damage was predominantly the central area, the eastern and western islands, or Visayas as they are known. Uh, if you note particularly in here, we can see a place called Tacloban City, which you'll be familiar with from your reading, and we'll come back to look at in more detail later on. As we can see here, the Philippines are extremely exposed, being made up of many, many small islands. Generally, when a hurricane or a typhoon makes landfall, it will be slowed down by a large landmass. In this case, this didn't happen. Um, the hurricane, the typhoon, poured straight over to the centre of the Philippines, and that is what led to such vast damage. Uh, one of the key areas which we'll look at in more detail later was the storm surge, which caused an 8 metre high wall of water to rush through the islands. So obviously coastal areas were particularly badly affected. Now, most of what we have covered so far in terms of answering likely GCSE questions will be mostly introductory. Uh, the key part of this case study is related to impacts on people and to impacts on property. We're going to start with impacts on people. So, as before, we've arranged it in point evidence explain format just to make sure that we maximise the number of marks coming from each of our key points. First point, 6,190 people were confirmed dead. Over 1,700 were reported missing. And in Tacloban, which you saw earlier in the map, it was home to 220,000 and it suffered the greatest loss of life. Again, because as we saw before, it was one of the first places to feel the full force of the typhoon on the east, to the east of the Philippines. So, next point then, severe damage to crops. Again, if
if we just put severe damage to crops, we'd be limited to one mark. So we'll develop it. Um, although the harvest season had ended for crops like sugarcane, many seed stocks were destroyed, and that then led to food shortages for 2.5 mi million people, and that'll be your key figure there. And lastly, for impact on people then, we have our further loss of life in the aftermath due to diseases. Again, develop this, examples, cholera and dysentery. And again, further development due to the decaying corpses and raw sewage contaminating drinking water supplies. And if you click this link at the bottom here on your ebooks, that will take you through 40 images of Typhoon Haiyan from the initial storm surge right through to the impacts on people and property. We're now going to move across to look at our impacts on property. So, 5 million people had their homes destroyed. First key point is to develop that 90% of structure wiped out across a 500 mile radius from the eye of Typhoon Haiyan. Uh, again, that ties into our initial picture where we saw the damage was greatest in these central areas, eastern and western areas, rather than north and south, um, because this is where the path of the eye travelled. Move back down. 10,390 schools were destroyed. Again, develop that by explaining how children miss out on education. Attempts were made to create temporary school structures. You can read through the rest of these yourselves um, from your ebook. And then at the bottom here, we've got a link to a very good um, geographic TV documentary on Hoi Han, which will obviously help to broaden your knowledge outside of simply the textbook facts. So the next section we're going to move to then describes some of the conclusions and responses in the aftermath of Hoi Han. Uh, this will be probably be used as a conclusion in your essay questions. So, as we can see, um, obviously hard to get emergency food, water and aid supplies to people in need because of the isolated nature of the islands. This wasn't helped by the airport being underwater and trees blocking a lot of the roads, although it did reopen relatively quickly, three days after the storm. Aid came from various sources, as you would expect, as we've talked about. Uh, the US Navy delivered fresh water. The UN released 25 million in emergency funds, a good figure to get in there. This section lacks figures a little bit, so people can remember. And it was endorsed by multinationals at like Coca-Cola, and the Beckhams also visited. I see David over here. In 2014, the Philippines released a Build Back Better plan for the nation. This included a no-build zone along the coast of the eastern Visayas, or eastern islands. Obviously, um, because most of the damage was done on the coast, this is before the hurricane or the typhoon struck first. Also, a new storm surge warning system, mangrove replanting. Um, some soft engineering strategies there, and an embankment to protect Tacloban, which you said earlier was the most populated city. Impact was great due to widespread poverty and low economic development. This obviously makes it harder then in the aftermath to clear up and to develop for the future as well. Even well built structures cannot always survive a Category 5 storm. So even had it been an MEDC, and had the structures been developed and um, with the intention of surviving storms, they might still have struggled. Now we're going to get on to our potential essay structure, essay question structure. Obviously this could be a variety of questions, we're going to look at just one. Uh, with reference to a case study from outside the British Isles, describe the impact of an extreme weather event on people and property. So if you see extreme weather events and outside the British Isles, you know where you're going for Hoi An. Um, people and property, you could get a shorter question, referring only to one. You could potentially get an evaluate question, referring to one or either. In this case, it's quite nice to describe, and it's, it refers to people and property. So, over here, we can see our intro. A uh, brief summary of what a typhoon is. Make sure you state in the name of your particular tropical storm. In this case, um, Typhoon Haiyan. Impacts on people. Nice concise paragraph, at least two points well developed. Impact on property, again, two points well developed, we'll cover that, and then a brief conclusion. Obviously more important if we're evaluating, but still nice to put in if we're describing. Uh, as I said at the bottom here, you can see that for six marks it's quite a detailed answer. You could probably get eight or nine with a similar answer, um, but if you've got time, put in as much as possible. Lastly, you've got your key tips up here. One important one to point out, please try and make sure you spell Philippines correctly. <laughs> 